today we get to showcase one of our major sponsors involved in helping us with our 68 Camaro build. We're at Haltech Engine Management Systems. Scott is inside pressing away at the buttons. Let's go in and check it out. Well, the guys have got the car here now. So an LS powered, um, we've got it on the chassis dyno. And the idea of today is a bit of a shakedown. So we'll start to rough a tune into the engine. Um, we'll get it idling nice. We'll get all the mixtures around idle and cruise really nice. And then as soon as we're happy with that, the guys are gonna go over the engine, make sure we've got no leaks or no silly stuff going on and do a basic health check on the car. Then after that, if everything's looking good, we'll start to try and make some power. And with any luck, by the time we leave, this thing should be making as much as it can make. Uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is just calibrating the dash. So it's a good chance at the moment, because the thing's got no fuel in it at all, we'll figure out the fuel level calibration. So the, whatever the voltage that the fuel level sender is giving us at the moment, that's zero fuel level. Then we'll put 40 litres of fuel in it. Then we know that's 40 litres. And then we'll fill it right to the top. That'll be the top voltage. So we'll get a bit of an idea of like exactly what's in the tank so that when you're driving it, we can set up a fuel light, like an empty light, say at 10 or 15% left. So this thing's a chassis dyno. Um, in some parts of the world, it's called a rolling road. Basically what's happening here, we've got a free spinning roller on the back that's not connected to anything at all. It just free spins on a big bearing. The one on the front has got a common shaft that goes the whole way through to the other wheel then to this knurled roller here. So it's got the special knurling so that you get good traction on it. Then inside this thing has got a retarder in there, it's called. So it's actually like a train brake that's electronically controlled. So what happens is as we're allowing the car to accelerate, so when we do like a power run, so the exciting part of a dyno run, we allow a certain amount of meters per second for the car to, to accelerate. So we might say accelerate at 10 or 15 or 20 meters per second, the ramp rate. So how fast it's allowed to accelerate. As I put my foot down on the throttle, I'll be able to get to 100% throttle, but the retarder in the dyno will hold us at 60 kilometers an hour, no matter what. So I can then tune all of those load points at 60 kilometers an hour. So 10% throttle, 20, 30, 50, 100, whatever. Then we'll go up to say two and a half thousand RPM, 3000 RPM, more and more and more until we've tuned all of the fueling requirements and all of the ignition timing across all of the engine RPMs and all of the throttle positions. Well, so far so good. And one of the really nice things about a car that's so well built, I always try and tell people that the first 100 kilowatts or the first 150 horsepower are the hardest ones to get because when there's so many nuts and bolts that are being touched in a car like this, you know, there's always something that's gonna come loose when you're doing testing. In this case, absolutely perfect. So we've made 100 kilowatts straight away. They're the ones that you use all the time when you're driving around. So now we've just gotta make the bigger ones. It's making 308 kilowatts or 413 horsepower at the wheels, which is probably bang on sort of what we're expecting. Remembering that we get drivetrain losses up to the flywheel rated horsepower of these engines. So about 308, 310 kilowatts is excellent power and it's gonna be really, really drivable in a car like this. So I'm excited for the guys to go out and street test it. At the moment, things are going brilliantly. So one of the things that the guys wanted to try because of the resto mod sort of style of this car, they wanted to fit the old school carby looking throttle body and they wanted to fit 
the factory style air cleaner from one of the older cars. So we've just done a power run. It's made 308.5 kilowatts at the wheels. We're gonna make absolutely no computer changes. The only difference is gonna be fitting the old school style air filter. And we're gonna do that to make sure that we don't lose any power and there's no restriction through that old style air filter.